Hi, my name is Mahdi Yusuf from Neckbeard Republic. This week we'll be discussing Sphinx, the Python documentation generator, and read the docs. If you've ever read documentation for any particular Python project, you've likely used one or both of these tools. In this week's screencast, we'll be talking about how to set up your documentation for your particular project, how to get started, how to structure your project, a little bit of tips on how to generate HTML and latex PDF versions of your documentation, as well as getting your documentation built as you push code. So let's get started. I've gone ahead and created a GitHub repository called Doctoot. This will serve as a scaffolding for our project, mainly contains a license file, a readme file, and a Doctoot code directory. That is empty right now and will likely be empty forever. This is just a scaffolding as to so you can understand where your code would be and where the documentation would be. The documentation should be encapsulated in its own folder, so we're gonna go ahead and create a docs directory now. So once we've created that docs directory, that's where you'll contain all your documentation. You wanna group this together so outsiders can clearly understand well, this is where all my documentation is stored. It makes them easy for them to go in and af after the fact, update or add changes to your documentation. Um, next, we're gonna install Sphinx, so let's gonna quickly activate the screencast virtual env, and we're going to go pip install Sphinx. Looks like we already installed it, but the install, install step is very straightforward. So next thing we wanna do, we're gonna enter our docs directory, and we're gonna simply call Sphinx dash quick start. Now this is a quick start guide wizard, basically a command line wizard that'll guide you through on creating your documentation, your conf.py, and it'll even generate a make file that allows you to easily generate local copies of your documentation quickly as you're writing the documentation. So it's gonna ask us for the root path of the documentation. We want it in our docs directory since we just cd it in there, so we're just gonna press enter. Anything that's contained in the squiggly brackets here will, re will um, reflect the default value for that particular question. Um, I like to have my source and build directory separate so I can tell what was used in the build state and what's actually the source. So we're gonna say yes to this question. Um, I, do would, I would like to have underscore templates and underscore static directories. This allows us to customize our, our Sphinx documentation with different themes and whatnot. But Read Docs recently launched a new, new uh, theme, which is quite awesome. So. Those of you who wish to use their own one can do this, so I'm going to press no in this particular one. Um, we're gonna name the project, we're gonna call it Doctoot. Author is Mari Yusuf. Project version is 0, 0 0.0.1. That is the release. This is asking us whether we want our, our uh, documentation files to be .txt files or .rst files. I recommend .rst, it allows you to have a bit more control of the source, although if you're just writing text, .txt seems to be just as fine. Um, this is asking us what we like to name our very root folder. So when we build our documentation, it's going to build everything against uh, main file. So that main file is what we're gonna look at when you load your documentation. Um, this is by standard called the index.rst, so we're just gonna press enter again. No, we do not like an EPUB output, so we're just gonna press no here. Yes, I would like to use that. And then the rest of these, I'm just gonna quickly click through no. This is just good defaults that Sphinx provides. So if you're just mainly just press enter all the way through here, you could easily just get through and generate all the stuff you'd like. We would like a make file, yes. We would like, yes, we'd like to create a bat file for Windows users. And we are done. So as you can see, that little process generated a conf.py, an index.rst, a make file, and a make.bat file for Windows users. So if we're just ls and then go into our source directory, you'll see that we have a conf.py. So if we're to simply just go vim conf.py, you'll see all the stuff we went and put in. So we wanted that auto doc extension. We wanted our template pass to be the same as the defaults. Our suffix for rst is that. And that's what we just did. We generated this entire file plus a couple of make files for quickly and easily generating documentation. So we're gonna step back out of here real fast and we're going to go back up and we're gonna go make HTML. And this, what should this should do is build our documentation. So as you can see, if we were to go to our build.html directory, you'll see that we do have an index.html, which should correspond to the text that's contained in our index.rst. So we're gonna quickly just open this real fast. And as you can see, 
welcome to doc to its documentation and then we have our indexes and our tables so now we have a scaffolding for, to start adding and injecting sections into our documentation which we'll cover next now that we're successfully able to build our documentation let's go ahead and take a look at our documentation and make some changes so we're going to open up our index.rst in vim and as you can see this simply contains the same amount of code or text that was in our rendered version and our HTML version. So we can go ahead and delete this comment up here. And those of you who aren't familiar with RST syntax, um, I'm, I will recommend uh, a rendering tool that allows you to get up to speed really quickly. So let's quickly change this line and let's go ahead and, and name our documentation title something else. So let's call it simple documentation tutorial Doc to. Excellent. So we've made a change. We're going to go ahead and save it. And then we're going to go ahead and build our code again. So we're going to go back to the make file directory. We're going to go make.html. And we're going to open build.html index.html. And as you can see, our, our title changed and we've successfully changed. Uh, piece of our documentation. So let's go ahead and quickly add another section to our documentation. So this requires us to go back into this file, in our RST file. So we're going to go into our source directory. We're going to go vim index.rst. We're going to create another title section. So let's call our section guide right here. Instead of context, we'll call this guide. And this will give us a section title called guide, which we will then put under the sections of our documentation. So let's have a few sections under here. And in order to do the sections, what you want to do is get it under the max depth of two. Now this max depth will show you how many will tell you or tell Sphinx how many title sections to render in the table of contents. So let's say we have a file called license and a file called help what well, when we build next time what Sphinx will do we'll go and look for those files and saying hey where are the where is our license.rst and our help.rst and it'll render all those particular pieces and create a table of context under our guide um, let's create one more other section here just for help sake we're going to go another simple header here is some text text explaining some very some very complicated stuff And what we're going to do after that, we're going to create a code block. And that's fairly done fairly easily. We're going to indent four spaces. And then we're going to go print hello. And as you see as output, we'll get now that we've done that, let's go ahead and build our text here. I've gone ahead and filled in our license.rst files as well. So if you try to build the project without any headers, so like a heading, heading title heading, what Sphinx will spit out saying, we're going to skip over and we're not going to render any title headings for this particular file because there's no titles. So the way the documentation and the max step works is that it requires you to have some type of header. So in this case, we have a license header. Um, we can call, we can give it another contact contact space here for somebody to contact in case they're interested about the licenses. So we're going we're gonna to say something like questions. Please, please contact So now that we have that, we have two headings and in our help.html I've simply said if you have any trouble with the project, please email blah. So we have sections and our headings. 
So once we've done all that, we should be able to generate our documentation by the same process as before. So we're in the same directory as our make file. So we're going to go out back up one. We're going to go make HTML. It builded all of our documentation without a much of an issue. And we're next, we're going to open up our documentation. So we're going to go open build HTML slash index.html. And that is the root. So as you can see, we have our title, we have another simple header, we have a code block, we have our license directory, which renders all of our stuff. If you have a, if you don't have any contact information, please go here. We have our contact information, we have our help in the next topic. As you can see that it tells you to email the documentation, we have our versioning, and there you have it. You have full set of documentation that you're building locally as you develop your stuff. So the process goes as follows. You go to your root, RST file, which in our case is the index.html, index.rst. You add your sections under max depth. Please be sure to place the beginning of your file name under the first colon in the max depth line. If you space this to the left, RST won't be able to, um, thinks won't be able to find the RST file that you're looking for. This is crucial and causes many, many people to get frustrated when first trying to render multiple pages with Sphinx. To have your talk tree is required by Sphinx, so you must have this regardless of whether or not you put anything in there. And that is a flow for adding more files, and then you simply create new headings and new files. Those of you who want to have some type of tool to help you render, I highly recommend Socrates. So if you take a look at our, we'll, we'll simply PDB copy our license.rst. So we're gonna cat our license at RST and we're gonna go pipe that to PB copy. And we're gonna paste it into our Socrates file. So as you can see, it renders everything as you would in RST. So you have our actual RST, and this is what a rendered format of this RST would look like. So if you're looking to have something in more real time, you can edit all your RST files in here and then paste them into the corresponding file. Things like talk tree and Think specific stuff will not work here, only pure RST syntax. One last word on max depth. Another thing that max depth allows you to do is to have subheadings in your table of contents. So I went ahead and changed our max depth to three. What this allows us to do is to show subheadings in inside particular files. So in our help file, we have a main title called need help, and we're gonna have a subtitle going need further help. And we're going to simply create this as a subtitle, which that is the syntax or subsection, which is the syntax in RST. We're going to go, please join our IRC channel on free node under doc toot. And once we write this file, and I'll quickly show you how our index that RST looks is I've changed the max depth to three. Now it'll render three levels deep into our structure. So for example, our structure before was two levels deep. We had a main title and that's all we had. Now we have a main title subtitle. It should allow us to render both sets of documentation. I believe even with two, this should render properly. So let's take a look at that first. Let's go ahead and build our source. We're going to go make that HTML. And we're going to open build.html index.html. And as you can see, we have see our nested need further help. So as you can see, our need help is our main one. And need further help has been nested inside that, which is inside our help.rst file. So, and we also showed that our nesting depth of two is more than enough. So now that we have all this set up and we understand how to structure our documentation, how do we get this hooked up to read the docs? What you simply need to do is log into readadocs.org and you need to go to your dashboard. You'll be presented with a dashboard. Currently, all I have is DeLorean for my projects that are using documentation on read the docs. What I would do for a new project is though I'd go import. We give the name, the project the name, so we're going to call it DocToots, DocToot. We're going to paste in the GitHub repository. So we took our repository here. And as you can see, this repository has no documentation as of now. So what we'll do is we'll push the code that we have currently and it should create uh, documentation for us on read the docs. Once this is done, all we need to do is add a description. 
documentation for creating amazing documentation. Once we have all that, we have our the, the configuration file. In our particular case, it's docs.conf.py. Public, we're going to allow everybody to see our documentation. Version level public, we're going to let that everybody see that. We don't need the virtual env. We don't need any system packages. We don't have a requirement file. We don't want to put an LX code. So let's go ahead and create this. So it said it's going to take a while for us to go build docs. This obviously won't work because this um, this uh, project doesn't have any documentation folder. But we what we need to do is create a post commit hook. So this is easily done through GitHub. What we're going to do is go to our repository. We're going to go to settings. We're then going to go to service hooks. As you can see, we should be able to find read the docs in here immediately. So we're going to click this. We're going to click active and we're going to update our settings. Now our service hook has been created for doc two. So all we need to do now is commit all our changes. So what I'm first going to do is clean up our docs directory. So we're going to go into the docs directory. We're going to make clean. We've deleted all our builds. So we only have our source directory and whatnot with us. We're going to back out. We're going to go git add docs. Git commit dash am adding first commit for documentation. And we're going to push this to GitHub. So as you can see, this would have been pushed to our GitHub repository here. with all our documentation and whatnot. And we should see a build firing. So that first one failed. So I managed to pinpoint the mistake that we made previously, which is quite ironic. Since I was trying to be explicit, I made a mistake. Our conf.py is in docs source conf.py. So in order to make this work, we have to make this change to make the path docs source conf.py. If you want, you can leave it implicitly and read the docs will find the conf.py for you and run against it. Now that we have made that change, if we were to go ahead and submit, our documentation should be should build and we should be able to see it here. There you have it. So it may look different for what I was building against locally. Locally, we're using the default Sphinx theme. When you push your code up to read the docs and you don't specify your theme, it'll use the default read the docs theme, which is mobile ready and quite awesome. So what we've covered today is building your documentation from scratch, creating your conf.py, adding templates and creating a structure for your documentation, styling it, as well as creating a post commit hook on your repository. So when you push code, your documentation is rebuilt to reflect your latest code changes. I hope you enjoyed the screencast and happy documenting.